John 15, verse, verse 4. Amen. The Bible says this, it says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Amen? Amen. You guys get that? Yeah. Let's read it over time. Amen? It says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in, in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So we know that the branch, amen, the word of God says that the branch cannot abide, cannot bear fruit itself, amen, unless he is work, unless he's connected to the vine, amen. If he's connected to the vine, and then that branch could have fruit, amen. So that means that that, 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 that that vine there, or that tree limb, could have the fruit that it's connected to that, that tree that it's going to have. If you're going to have oranges, you're going to have lemons, you're going to have any kind of fruit, you're going to have, you're going to have grapes, amen? Imagine that vine there with grapes, but if one of those strands are not connected to the main source, what's going to happen? It's not going to burn no fruit, amen? So this is how we are. What do we find ourselves in this place? What do we find ourselves living in this in this part of scripture? What do we find myself, yourself living in this part of scripture? Exactly, we're the we're the vine. We're the we're the we're the limb of the of, of the vine of the of the main source. Amen. The branch. Amen. So if we're not connected to the main source of that tree, what's going to happen? You're not going to bear fruit, right? You're gonna wither away. You're gonna die. Amen. In the spirit, you're gonna you're gonna die. Amen. We're talking spiritual. Okay. Let me get that right. We're talking spiritual. A lot of people don't really really realize what you know what what could really happen. In other words, uh, a lot of people believe that they come and get saved and and they receive Jesus as personal Savior. That they sit down in that bench, listen to the pastor, and that's it. They don't have to go home and read. They don't have to go home and pray. They don't have to do nothing. and just come in again to the next to the next service and not receive what he has. But the thing is that if he never tells you how you're going to live in Jesus, how are you going to live in Jesus? How are we going to live in, 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 in the Lord? How are we going to abide in him? See, we need to build our lives on Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? We need to build our lives in Jesus Christ. But how are we supposed to build our life in Jesus Christ if we don't even know who Jesus Christ is? Right. You know his name. Everybody knows his name. Even the demons know his name. The demons from the little one to the biggest one. To the one demon to the legions. They all know his name. That's why when, when, the, when the legions were in the man, uh, uh, they asked Jesus, he, he coming ahead of time, man, taking us out, this guy. But we ask you, you, you let us go to the pigs. Remember? Right. And the story, and, and the, the gospel. So what did Jesus say? He says, okay. Depart. But those demons went to the water because they killed the pigs, but the demons lived in water. Uh, I'll get back to that one in a little bit, but they didn't die, but they still live around the water. That's why when you go to those cruises, you gotta be to be careful. Because there's alcohol, there's gambling, there's all kinds of stuff, and then the devil tells you, hey, Pastor, nobody's here, man. What you do? A gamble. And by the time you do it, you lost all your money and you didn't enjoy your cruise. And not only that, but you feel all oppressed, depressed. Oh, why did I do that? I shouldn't have did that. But we have to stay plugged in in Jesus. Yeah, amen. 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 Even even a living a life, a regular life, without Jesus, is so difficult. It is so difficult to live a life, and only by the grace and the mercy that we live another day amen. to talk. 
Because sometimes we don't even read our word and, and get instruction of the word because we put ourselves so busy that we don't give him time. When we pray, when we, when we want something, when we're in need of something, oh man, we give him the whole world. I'll give you my life, I'll do anything you want. Are you really sure you're going to give him your whole life? Are you really sure? Are you going to give him everything you want? Because many people say, I'll give you anything I want, and they don't do that. But they find themselves living a life with, you know, sorrow, depression, sadness, and stuff like this, because they, they, it's not because Jesus punished them, no, because that's the life they choose to live. And the enemy had power over them. Remember I told you uh, last Wednesday that the enemy is always waiting around the corner to to test you, to, to try to come and take your miracle away? Right. Every time you read the Word of God and you read the Word to get filled, to get more uh, uh, educated, more wisdom in, in, the, in the Word of God. And we're supposed to read the Word of God not to go rebuke other people. No. Amen. We're supposed to read the Word of God to rebuke ourselves. Amen. Because we know ourselves more than anybody knows. We might think that we know uh, the other person's uh, uh, of what they're doing, but we don't. Really deep inside, if you really look at it, Jesus is the only one that knows each and one of us hearted. Right. We could put a front and say, hey, I'm really good. I, I, I could get dressed well and be really good, and everybody thinks I'm it's, it's, oh, actually living a good life. No. People that put fronts like that, you know what I mean? You gotta really ask the Lord, check them. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But before you can check them, you need to check yourself. Yeah. Because we have to learn how to abide ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Because God did not make us judges, but He made us what? Servants to work. Amen? Amen. He didn't come to this earth to judge. He came to this earth to save us. Yeah. Amen. There's a time of judging but it's not now. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. It's going to be coming pretty soon. But at that time, we need to be prepared that when we go in front of that judge, that we're going to walk in to the kingdom. That he's not going to say, depart from me. I didn't know you. Who are you? What's your name? He wants us to know that by us abiding in Him, we could know that our blood is like His blood, a DNA. That comes from Genesis, amen? Because we know that God created us as His, as his image, amen? amen? And number five, it says, I am the vine, you are the branch, he who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me you cannot do nothing. Amen. Simply as that that he tells us in red letters without him we can't do nothing. Amen. How many times did we try to do things without Jesus? Right. It doesn't work out. But we don't understand it until we're right in the middle and realizing that, man, I can't do this myself. I need Jesus. Amen? I need the Lord. See, what people don't really understand is Jesus, serving Jesus is like, being, it's like being married with a husband and a wife here in the, in the earth. That was a, a, a reminder what we need to be with him. Right? Why? Why was it a reminder? Because Jesus says, you need to love your wife like the way I love the church. Right? So if you look at it, 
Who's the church? We are. Who's his wife? We are. So if he loves us with all that love that he has for us, he loves us. How are we going to get to know his really love if we don't abide in him? If we're not connected with him? And I'm not talking about I'm not saying like, oh, well, I know Jesus, Pastor. I've been, I've been serving Jesus for 25 years. But we're still in the same spot. We're still suffering and we're still dealing with things that we should not be dealing with things no more. Because right. we should have grown. Right. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Yes. Amen. And, 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 and the Holy Spirit, and, and, and this is what I'm saying. Because when I when I got this message come together here, I says, Lord, I, I don't want this for the people. I want this for me. So, as I was there, and I was there, I put myself in that message. Am I really abiding in you, Lord? And these are questions that we need to ask ourselves. In your prayer room, when you're intimate with the, with the Lord, Lord, am I really connected with you? Like spirit and heart? Or am I just, or I just know your name? There's a difference. Right? Amen. We need to know inside what God wants for us. Amen. And how we get that is by being abiding in Him. Being transformed, clean, and being together with Him. Because remember, that branch by itself will wither away. Yeah. And as long as it's hooked up to the source, it'll live. As long as we are hooked up to the source, we will live. If we depart ourselves away from the source, we're drying up. We might stay green for a little bit. I want it for a little bit. And I'm just plants over there and, and lows, you know, because they get us like that green for five minutes, ten minutes, uh, start thinking, start getting well. You seen that, RJ? In a nursery? Amen. I remember when I would put the the the, the one little quartz of bogies, bogavillias. I used to work in that nursery before you were born, before your father, <laughs> before your mom was even born. <laughs> Praise the Lord, and I would put them in five gallon buckets, and I would pray and ask the Lord, Lord, make this grow fast. And one day I was I was doing that, and the Lord says. The only way this is grow fast is he put good soil. So one on one, we need to live in good soil. We need to have good soil in our ground foundation. Amen. Because we're good soil, good things grow. Amen. And then he goes, another thing, you have to put water, and water will make this grow, make the roots expand for the roots to go down and get root. And then you have to throw fertilizer. Or it could be stronger and grow faster. Okay, so this is the foundation. The foundation, we need good ground, good soil. We need the word uh, uh, because the word has to water us. Amen? Amen? But we also need one more thing. Prayer? Fasting? No. no. We need the bread. Because the bread is going to open your eyes and your mind and your heart and give you the knowledge to live and grow faster in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When we are got our foundation ready, amen, when we got the water coming in, which is the word of God, right? But if the word of God does water and bread. Now, the plant gets hungry, right? What does a fertilizer do to a plant? 
Yes. Feeds it. He eats off of it. So what is the word of God, the bread part, do to us? It feeds us. It makes us expand. It makes us get fruit. Amen? It makes us grow. Praise the Lord. All right. I never thought I was going to be a teacher, but okay. So we need to know that, that by abiding in him, we will live with him. Amen? And we know that 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 we cannot do nothing without him. There's nothing in this world that we could do without Jesus that it, it, we could make it to heaven. We need him all the time. We need him. We need him for growth. We need him to build. We need him to uh, do the foundation because he's a foundation. And we need him for every source of our life. And we need him because he's the main source of the vine. And he's the one that gives us the food and the drink. Amen? Amen. Remember when he met the woman in the well? What did he tell her? If you knew me, you won't be thirsty no more. Because I'll be giving you living water. And what was the first thing she said? You don't have a jug and the well's really deep. How can you get water? Because he is the water. See, a lot of times when we read the Word of God, we don't look at it spiritually, and it's all spiritual book, amen? amen? But we look at it physically, what helps us hear this earth. And it does. The United States used the Bible for a long time, and they got scholars looking at the Bible, they got, I mean, doctors and all this stuff looking at the Bible, and they still can understand the Bible because they're looking at it physically, they're not looking at it spiritually. And when they look at it spiritually, they come against the word. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they look at it, and they look at it only living in the law of it, the cardinal way. They said, man, you know, they had a hundred and what, nine, a hundred and sixty laws they have to live by. My God, you imagine? You imagine if, if Jesus wouldn't have been here, we wouldn't have been here, but uh, you imagine if we still live by the law like that? I mean, he only gives us two commandments, right? Well, those two cover all the ten. And I'm going to show you why. If you love Jesus that much, you will follow the ten. But he said only to love your brother and your sister, right? right. Love your neighbor. With what? All your heart. With all your heart. Yeah, that's why he said, love your brother with all your heart. Amen? Amen. And that was going to cover the ten. Amen. You're not going to forget the ten. You're not going to forget the other commandments. Because he's going to put you in check. And there's obedience, disobedience. You know, we want to go in obedience. We want to listen to what God has to say. Amen? Amen. And he's going to give it to you. You see, if you want to live with the Ten Commandments and not live according to what Jesus says, are you going to be able to with, uh, uh, live those Ten Commandments? No, because every time you go to the supermarket, you get a grape and you walk away. Yeah. You already, you already down one check. <laughs> Just grab the thing, put it in your basket, and eat it and pay for it. Amen. Yeah. You tell them, it was full, but I was hungry, so I, I, here it is. Charge me for that. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so we're building ourselves, our lives, amen, and on Jesus Christ. So we know that we have to abide in Him, and, and then, and, and, uh, and I and you, as the branch, cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So it's really important for us to read the Word of God and not only just to read it, but to know what He has for you and me. Right. Let's don't read it to, to uh, uh, prove somebody wrong, but read it for your life. How can I fix my life? Right. You know, I can't take my brother. I can't take my mother. I can't take my father. I can't take nobody. 
I can't take my wife. I can't take my sons. I, I, I'm only going to take myself. They can't take me. I can't hang, I, I can't hang on to them. Hey, they, you know what, man? Jesus said, man, you are one. Come on, let's go together. No, it's not going to work that way. It's not going to work that way. This is why, hallelujah, I had a tremendous testimony. I never met my dad before. Never met him. Never talked to him. Never did nothing. But four, four years ago, I think it was four, three years, four years ago, I asked, I always prayed and asked the Lord. Answer my prayer, Lord. The only thing I want to do is minister to him, share the word to him, share, uh, 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 share salvation to him, and, 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 and that's it. And talk to him. If he doesn't want to do it with me, it's fine. I don't want nothing for him, Lord. I don't want nothing. I don't want, you know, you bless me all these years. You bless me. I just want to see him in front of me, right here, just right here, talk, man to man. And the Lord made that happen. And you know what? I told the Lord, I don't want to talk to him in, a, in, in his dying bed. I want to talk to him man to man. Lord, where he could understand what I'm talking about. And he says, all right. I'm going to make that happen. But it's going to be my time, not your time. And you know where it happened? It happened at, at the cemetery. And he was sitting down looking at my brother's grave. And he stood there sitting down. And I stood right there. And me and my son... And we took a picture with him and everything. And I told him, and I talked to him. And I, and I told him exactly the same thing I told you right now. I told him. And I says, Dad, I just want to know something. Am I your son? And he looked at me and says, yes, you are. And these things happen, I cannot give my last name, but you are my son. I says, good. All right. Now I got one more thing to tell you. I want you to introduce you to Jesus. I want you to know that Jesus could forgive you. I want you to know that He loves you and that you know He came for you. He could heal you, but if He decides to take you, at least you know Him. In less than a year, the Lord took him. He went to be with the Lord. But. Guys, my petition is fulfilled right there and then. And these are the miracles that God does when a lot of times it might not seem a lot to people. Because a lot of times you might not understand. But the thing is, this is what God wants us to be like. He wants us to sit down in front of Him and speak to Him and get to know Him. Not only by name or by picture, because they probably don't even have the right picture. But the thing is, is, is get to know him personally in the spirit. And know how he works. Know how he functions. Know how he is with you and know how he answers you. You know his voice. Ezekiel at the cave said, is that you, Lord? It wasn't him. And to a quiet little he goes, oh, Lord, I know that's you. And then he spoke to Ezekiel. It's time for you to get out of the cave. Come on. Let's go to work. Amen? Amen. How many of us been in a cave? Because we're, we're, we're trying to learn. We're trying to learn uh, theology. We're trying to learn all the outside, but we're forgetting him. You're forgetting Jesus. Right. When Jesus says, learn about me and I'll teach you everything else. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go to Colossians uh, 2 7. Because now we're in, now we're in, we're abiding in Him. We got to be connected to the vine. Amen? But then there's also. The root. Amen? Also, we need to be rooted. Amen? We need to be rooted and built up in Him. So in other words, without roots, whatever we have growing, it's not going to grow. 
So they're going to be effective. Do you want a big tree or a small tree? Do you want only a little bit of fruit or do you want a lot of fruit? All right, you want a lot of fruit. All right, so that's good. You want a lot of fruit. What does it take to have a lot of fruit? To know him, to obey him, and to do the things that he tells you to do. Even when you don't want to do them. Even when you don't want to do them. Even when you don't want to do them. You got to do Because we have to be obedient in the spirit. And somebody read that for me, please. Colossians 2 7. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Rooted and built up and established in the faith. We got to be rooted, built up, and established in his faith. Amen. We got to have a faith. You got to have the faith. That when any demon comes around you, in front of you, trying to distract you, you got the power in you and the word in you to rebuke or to cast them out. Yeah. Because you're rooted. You're not going to let no demon try to come and tell you any different. You're not going to let no demon try to come into your life and tell you that you're not building up and that you're not rooted. Oh, that's a lie of the devil. Get behind me sitting right now. Because everybody gets built different according to how much you want to get built. Because you know, by uh, how many of you know that by being built, it hurts? Amen. Right. By being built, it hurts. <coughs> you ever build a, a, a shelf and you cut a little bit too long and it's going to fit? <laughs> So you're like, if the wood was alive, you'd say, hey, man, got that little uh, hat coat or whatever, you know, let me go in there nicely. But you, you're forcing the wood in there. God wants us to go in a nice cut. Always in a nice cut. The enemy always wants to hit us hard, but God wants to build us up correctly. He wants to give the right measurements. He wants to give the right things. He wants to put uh, uh, the right space. Like in other words, those windows, look at these windows. They look the same. Right? Imagine yourself here and heaven there. It has to look the same. If there's a pillar here, there's got to be a pillar over there. Because that's his house. That's a house that we have to follow. Amen? Amen? So we have to know that we have to be built. Amen? We have to be built, and when we are built, we have to be rooted. So what happened to our roots? How big can your tree get if your roots are only on the tree, if the roots are only there? Two feet. How big is your tree going to be? Well, let me, let me give you. Uh, uh, I'm not a gardener, but I shoot at everything, man. I hit everything, you know. Pero todas las puertas, man. Como se dice el dicho. Sabes tocar, sí, todo. Let's go. All right. This is the, 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 the thing about the tree. The bigger the tree, the bigger the root. And the deeper the root. So I don't know if you remember, you guys lived in Coachella, right there by uh, Valley Road. There was a 50 feet tall tree, right? in the second, third house from that neighborhood. By the Catholic Church. One, two, three, I think they bought this. Uh, but anyway, there was a big old tree. And I remember because I used to climb that tree all the time. My goal was to get all the way to the top. But I never did because they would always tell on me. So I had to come down. 
But there was a man there, and that tree was huge. It was big, and it was fat, and the leaves went, you know, expanded. And the more that the leaves expanded, and the branches expanded, the roots expanded. Because that has, that has to hold the, the, the weight of the tree. Yeah. It staples it. So, in us, it's spiritual. That's how we have to be. Amen. Jesus said, I give you a mustard seed. A seed of a mustard seed. That you can do anything you want with your faith. Amen. How big do you want to grow? How big do we want to be? Sometimes we have to do sacrifice at our flesh to grow big. Right. When Jesus wakes you up in the middle of the night and says, get in my word. I want to talk to you, but I don't want you to say nothing. I want you to read my word. Amen. How many times did he tell us to get up and read his word and we go over and pray instead of reading the word? Right. And you tell them every single day, talk to me, Lord, talk to me. I'm trying to talk to you. By my word. Who's the word? Jesus is the word. Amen? Amen? So if we get into the word and read, he'll speak to us in the word. And then that will give our, our answer. You know that our answers are in the word. Amen? Amen. But we don't want to know our answer because we have to get into the word. So we'll take somebody else's advice. I, I believe them. And, 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 and maybe God just said, no, I wanted you to read the word because I wanted you to, to understand quicker. Amen. Because I was going to reveal it to you. But since you don't want me to, all right. I'll wait, I'll wait for you over there. You're going to struggle a little bit, but I'll wait for you over there. You'll come back. Somebody read. First Chronicles 16, 11. Chapter 16, verse 11. Amen. Before you go there, let me hit this one real quick, and then we'll go there. And uh, you don't have to move, you don't have to go there, but in, in, in John 15, 4, it said abide in me, right? right. And, and, and then, you know, okay, so... Let me read this something to you, to us right here. It says, "Abide in me" means to con uh, to uh, to connect in a daily personal relationship with with Jesus. Hold on. Uh, char uh, um, char uh, character. Uh, how much is it? Um, characterism. <coughs> Characterized. Yeah, there you go. Characterized uh, by truth. How, uh, prayer and obedience. By truth, prayer and obedience. Amen. Amen? That's what it means to abide in Him. To live in truth, prayer and obedience. Amen. And we all know that by adding fasting in there, that helps us gain wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and the five skills. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can somebody read? Call out. You got that, John? Oh, God. First Chronicles what? Uh, First Chronicles 16, 11. Amen. Seek the Lord and his strength. When you seek him, you want to seek him and his strength and seek his presence constantly. Amen. Amen. How did you say it again? Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His face evermore. And evermore. Seek His face evermore. So basically, He wants us to seek Him. To look for Him. Amen. To search Him. He wants us to spend time, make time in our life. In our busy schedule. We're doctors, man. We're like doctors. We're busy 24-7. We're so busy. We don't have time for Jesus. We're so busy. We need to make time for him. Amen? Amen. Yeah. It's like anything else. 
We make time for our families. We make time for our friends. We make time for our work. We make time for everything else. But we get mad when we make time for Jesus. There's always church. There's always something going on. Yes, there's always something going on. Because we need it. Without the word of God, we, we would die and we would drop. Without his wisdom and his knowledge and his understanding, how are we going to get from here, point A to point B? How are we going to get there? We're always suffering because we don't, we want to understand something that we don't, but at the same time, we don't want to go into the Word of God to find out. How are we supposed to learn what God is trying to do in our life when we don't go into the Word ourselves? God is a respectful of men. Amen? Amen. And he'll respect you as long as he could. But there's sometimes that he's going to throw you out of the bush. Amen? Amen. There's Hebrews 3.4. Nobody could harm us. 
They're going to try. But God is going to bring on a hurt. You know what I mean? You know that you, you have radars all around you? Did you know that? Did you know that you have radars all around you? That are detecting demons. But when you're off the word of God, that radar, that side of radar, it's, 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 it's off the service. And then the other one turns off the service. And then the other one. And I, why am I getting so attacked? Oh, hallelujah, only on this side. <laughs> but well, get back in the word of God. Turn those radars back on. Huh? Turn them back on. Because I'm going to tell you, when you're in the Word of God and you're plugged in in the Word of God and things try to come to you, you go, you go through it like if nothing. Right. You ever seen people go through trials? Yeah. And, and man, I don't know how that brother did it. Yeah, it's not the brother, not the sister. No. It wasn't me, it wasn't my wife. It was Jesus. Come on. Amen. Jesus came in play and says, this is where I come in play, son. And he lay down right there with us and he says, I got you guys. Amen. It don't matter how it looks like. It don't matter how much it hurts. It doesn't matter how much. Know that I got you. Amen. And we got up and stood up, looked at each other, says, Jesus got us. You think that was a big blow? A couple months later, they call us up and say, we would like to know if you could do our funeral. My wife came and told me, she goes, they called us up and they want to know if we could do the funeral. Whose funeral? I had, uh, they had like about, uh, a year before in that year, I did like almost like 11 funerals. I got to know everybody in the funeral homes from the valley. Uh, did I say sir? Sister? Sister? Lord, give me a message, bro. Give me a message of love. I don't know what you got to do, but it's good. I learned, I learned, man, he's like, all right, bro. It's left. I got you. All right. Went all the way to that day, that moment of day. And then they called and says, uh, it's okay. You know, we, we, you know, we got somebody. You know. But I believe to this day that the Lord, from the beginning to that moment, it was a big test. Amen. To see if my heart would turn around and my heart would say no, my heart would... I says, Lord, my heart is open. Anything you want me to do, I'll do it. Amen. And the Lord says, okay, I know you will. Right here it stops. Oh. But God is so good. God is so good. We have to know. And we have to be plugged in. And we have to be uh, uh, in Him. Because sometimes you're going to walk around this earth not feeling God. Right. Sometimes you're going to walk around this earth not feeling the spirit. Yeah. You're going to be all flesh, man. But where do you face stand? Where does your belief stand? Where do you stand with Jesus? Are you rooted in the solid ground? Are you rooted? Are you cultivated in good ground? Are you, hallelujah, uh, uh, sitting in the rock? Hallelujah. Where are you at in this? In this in the, are you abiding in him and him in you? Where are you at in this in this area in this uh, in this one place? Where are you at? And this is what we God wants to uh, tell us: is where are we at? The Bible says, if you abide in Him, He's abiding in you. But put yourself in that Scripture. Where are you at in that Scripture? Are you? By him, are you abiding in him? Are you blended to the vine? Are you uh, pressed to the vine? Are you hold on to the vine? Because our words could say yes, 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 but our actions could say totally different. 
What's going to happen when a, tra tra a tragic thing comes to your life and you have to stand there, hallelujah, and know that you got to believe in the living God, hallelujah, and, and people are going to tell you, how can he do this to you? And you got to stand there. His ways are not my ways. Amen. Yeah. I will never understand why, but I know one thing. That he lives in me and I live in him. And that's how I have the strength every single day to walk, hallelujah, and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, hallelujah, and tell the people, hallelujah, that he lives. Because how we want. And share the gospel. Give Jesus that clap offering. Psalms 91. Somebody go to Psalms 91. Verse 1 and 2. Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2. When you marry 
And when your wife throws her clothes everywhere all over the room, but the husband always nice and neat, I just get <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, when the husband comes from work and he goes like this, you know, and the wife is like, hey, man, what's wrong with you? Those are things that you have to change. When you guys are asleep in the middle of the night, your wife tells you, give me a big bowl, give me a glass of water, please. How are you going to get up? <laughs> I'm going to give you a little wisdom. When you go bring a bottle to the room, bring four bottles. Right. That's what I do. And I go, oh, here we go. There we go. <laughs> Three. I go to sleep. Praise the Lord. But God is good, amen? This is the points that we have to learn. These are the points that we have to give God. This is the points that we have to give him. We have to abide in him. Not just know his name, but have a relationship.